Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back once again to The Past is Alive. And tonight we are ripping into, on the retro box here, 1991 score. Not a really thrilling box to open, but it could be because we're chasing after the um, very rare uh, numbered out of 2,500 Mickey Mantle autograph cards. I picked up a few boxes of these lately. I usually never come across them, but as of the last week, I found a few uh, for 10 bucks a piece at a card shop down the road from my house. And then I picked up this one at Turtle Play Vintage in Ohio yesterday for five bucks. So I think five bucks for a shot at a Mickey Mantle autograph is um, a pretty awesome deal. So I may try to find some more of these and search for this Mantle auto and kind of put the Frank Thomas no name on front on hiatus for a little while because this box has continued to go up in price. I want to go after the cello boxes, but they're about 50 bucks a piece now. So um, I will continue to look out for those. I saw quite a few at Rogers, but um, didn't pick up any. So thanks for being here, you guys. Normally you get a box at 91 score for about series two for about 20 to 30 bucks. Now series one, you don't have a chance at the mantle. There is no mantle auto in series one. So please don't buy those looking for... The, uh, the Mantle Auto, because you will not find it. 716 Inc. Adam, thanks for being here. Paul L. also here says, I hate these cards more than 91 Fleer. <laughs> at least the Chipper Jones rookie card is in Series 2, unlike 91 Fleer. So at least there's some speckle of hope that can be found in here. you got the uh, typical plastic garbage bag wrappers here. I like this set whenever I was um, a kid. Our dad actually bought this set for both Eric and I. I think and the Chris is a 91, somewhere around there. Joe Yankee says, I'm bumming it when the Trammel Auto. I called dibs on the Mantle Auto. <laughs> Joe Yankee, I'm sorry, man, that you didn't win that. I know you really wanted it. See these uh, kind of creepy Dream Team cards. Jose Canseco actually has a Dream Team card in this set that um, used to drive all the women crazy, him like swinging a bat on the beach with his shirt off. And uh, Joe's card, Corel. next time you see him, if he's in here, whatever, ask him about this card because it's his most hated card of all time. The Reds October, Chris Sabo, and who's that, Marion Duncan doing a freaking handstand? Yeah, he absolutely hates the Reds October card. And you have the big head cards, of course, that were typical in early 90s Fleer. Barry Bonds, Jimber Jones rookie cards, and look something like that. The draft pick cards, I used to like these ones. <clears throat> I never liked these trivia, these little trivia pieces, though. All Rude's second year, he's on the cover of the box. Daryl Strawberry, um, his cards are actually increasing in value. Ben McDonald and Greg Jeffries. Would have been a great pack in 1991. Yeah, so the Mantle Auto is limited to 2,500. I don't know what the real odds of pulling it are. I don't know if there are any odds of pulling it. But 2,500, I want to say there was 4 million of every one of these cards printed. Um, which is a relatively no, low number from what I imagined. I was thinking like... 15 or 20 million for each card, 4 million. There's a Bob Welch Cy Young Award. Paul L says, The thing I hate the most about these cards is the big letter in the corner. Yeah, that is real annoying. It definitely is. <laughs> Samuel Moose, Eric Davis, Henderson. No one Ryan, no hit club. That's a cool card, though. I was always kind of uh, peeved by how everything is different colors. Very colorful looking set. Jake says, I have about 90,000 scorecards. <laughs> this break is giving me P PTSD. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, Louis Moreno, what's happening, man? Yeah, it should be a relatively short rip tonight. Ken Griffey Jr. Dream Team card. I always like that one. That's a cool card. So far, his box is pretty decent. Ryan Sandberg, shout out to Craig B. Ultimate Sam. Uh, Reds October, twice now, Bo Jackson. Master Blaster. That was a cool card back then. <laughs> Bob Welch. I don't remember that card at all. That's pretty weird. Interesting choice. There's Corey. Says, Should I go to Taco Bell? The answer to that question is always yes. Lewis has got the, got your mail or got the package in the mail today. Yeah, no problem, man. Hopefully you didn't have uh, any of those Griffies. I tried to make just kind of more obscure ones. What is that Welch card? I was wondering that, man. I've never seen that before. Jack Clark throwing his bat. A very wild Roger McDowell. Yeah, hopefully we see some interesting photography in here. Uh, Bob Welch on the bad omen list. Andy Van Slyke. Stewart. Jeff Conine. I feel like that was a hot card back then. That's actually his rookie card. 
And of course, the Sabo imposter, Travis Fryman. So I got three blocks of these. <clears throat> Start trying to do maybe do a video a week going after some chase cards. Like I think I have like four boxes of the 93 Don Russ, two boxes of 92 score series two, and then two more of these and just a ton of boxes. So I'm gonna thank you guys for being here and suffering through 91 score, which I don't hate too much. They definitely take me back. Kyle Ripken franchise card was a cool one. Shout out to Corey. But yeah, I feel like the crazy coloring and everything is enough to give you freaking a migraine. Bobby Bo, big head. Steve Carse was kind of a decent one back then. Prospect card. Joe says, I found out today that Channel Omen, Eric Plunk, charges 10 bucks per through the mail auto card. <laughs> He's not worth a dollar. That's crazy. Doesn't Sandberg charge 10 bucks? So Plunk's like putting himself on a pedestal like with Sandberg. That's freaking ridiculous. I cannot believe that. Sandberg's five bucks, so Plunk charges double what Sandberg charges? That is freaking criminal. <laughs> How's he get away with it? Oh, nice. Chris Sabo. That's a good a good shot of him. Gotta love that one. Let's find this Mickey Mantle auto. Never seen anybody pull it. I wonder if there's any YouTube videos of anybody pulling this card. <clears throat> That'd be pretty awesome. Gotta check that out later on. Don't at me, Corey says. <laughs> yeah, it should be a relatively quick rip. And then, uh, I don't know. I'm going to do another auction here, like probably sometime soon. We're going to do a more modern auction. All rookie card only. Benito Santiago. Will Clark, Aaron Holbert. I don't really remember him too much. Clemens came in. Those are cool cards, though. Cool design. Remind me of, like, select aces. Armandos is a chipper in the set. He is in Series 2. Dirk, what's happening, man? Thank you for the well wishes. Could be worse. Could be 91 Fleer. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. At least there is, like, a rookie chase card in here. And 91 Fleer, the rookie chase cards like Luis Gonzalez. Patrick T says, can you do an Omen video? We definitely could do that. I was thinking about that. Will Clark, shout out to Willie, 565. Sandy Almar, Dave Justice, second year. This Jeff Conine is definitely on the Omen watch list, possibly making his way into the ranks of Bad Omens. The third freaking Jeff Conine we've seen. $2 Super Chat from Tony Papas. Thank you very much, Tony. I appreciate that. Very, very cool of you. Thank you for being here. Yeah, on the topic of Bad Omens, I know I've shown it before, but I kind of stopped. Oh, here's one. Uh, Paul L., I know you'd appreciate that. I don't know why this is in the stack, but... Paul L., the uh, Al Padrique Master Collector. So we do have the big, massive stack full of bad omens that are uh, kind of just sitting here waiting and festering for me to make up my mind what I want to do with that. Who knows what that will be. Brian Smith says, Will Clark was my favorite player in the late 80s and 90s. And I always loved Will Clark, too. As did a lot of other people, and I know people still collect him as well. Will Clark was awesome. Interesting Henderson Dream Team card. One of the oldest to ever do it, Ron Karkovice. At least he always looked like it. What year? What was his birth date? 63. That's that's, that's pretty crazy. He was only... <laughs> There's Steve Carsagan, Kaseko, Corey Snyder. With his blonde scum stash. Yeah, I, I still can't get over Ron Karkovice. It wasn't even 30 years old in that. On that card. Looks like he's like 50. Todd Beast is finding the mantle is about the same odds <laughs> as me trying that broccoli pot pie thing John eats. You got to try that, man. Now you just made me hungry. Now I want a broccoli pot pie. That Brent Knackard card is really creepy, too. Bob Welch, you are on, officially on the Omen list. Add him to the stack. Eric Davis, big head card. Yeah, now I want a broccoli pot pie. Now I want pizza, actually. That's what our dad has pizza every Saturday night. I feel like that's been his tradition for like 50 years now. Saturday pizza night. I'm sure a lot of people probably do that. Robin Yount, Doc Gooden. I actually picked up Doc Gooden's 84 Fleer update yesterday in Ohio. I was stoked because I'd never come across that card. Donald DeShield, shout out to Corey. He PCs Delino. Dave Justice. All rude. Yeah, there's that creepy Bob Welch card. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's pretty weird. The creepy split finger card. 
David East has just made pizza for me and my son today. That's awesome, man. Ron Johnson's score was trash. Yeah, I will definitely uh, <clears throat> rip through it, though, in a chance to find a mantle. Obviously, it's super, super hard to find that card, but you never know. There could still be 500 left in packs. I, I have no idea. I feel like a lot of people stopped collecting around this time, so <clears throat> making the chances for us to find it almost uh, 30 years later even better. Here's a Ripken again. So seeing a lot of the same cards. Andy Hawkins, no hit club. Tom Hankey, freaking Andy Hawkins. Brent, Brian Smith says, I picked up one on eBay for 40 bucks. the good in 84 update. Yeah, I was stoked. I found it for 25 bucks at the shop yesterday. I almost didn't buy it, then I ended up getting it. And I was like, wow, it's, they're selling for like between like 50 and like 70 bucks on eBay. There's Boom Slang. says, the 91 score mantle auto sold for $400 a year ago, and now they go for 600 to 1000 bucks. If the box prices keep going up, you may just buy the auto. Hey, Boom Slang, thanks a lot, man. Appreciate that. Please, uh, Corey, if you could drop a link to Boom Slang's channel, please. I'm trying to get him to 1,000 subs. He's getting pretty close. He's like 100 some away. Creepy Roberto Almar card. Kurt Schilling, that's a cool one. Nolan Ryan, K-Man, Scott Scudder. <laughs> I cringe every time I hear that name since uh, the time I spent like three hours looking for his 90 tops card to complete the uh, Reds team set for somebody a while back. Scott Scudder, that's pretty awful. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, the Doc Gooden 84 Fleer update, that set is going up big time. I have the, uh, the Saberhagen rookie and now I have the Doc Gooden. But I was really surprised because, like, the Clemens rookie in that and the Curry Puckett, like, they're both, like, 200 bucks now. A year ago, maybe even six months ago, they're both 100 bucks. Now, for, for them raw, 200 bucks. There is the very erotic, shirtless Curry Puckett Dream Team card. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. Like, half of those cards, the guys are shirt. Whoa, look at that. Mickey Mantle Triple Crown. Wow. I've never, ever seen one of these. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. If only that could have been the freaking auto. There he is. Two of seven, the insert card set. I've never even seen one of these on person. That's pretty freaking cool. So I'm guessing the insert would just be uh, just one of these signed. Very, very cool. But, yeah, you never know. There could be another one in the box. We'll keep trying anyways. We're about halfway through, but that's pretty awesome. Though. I like that card. I ordered card stands, so I don't got to do this anymore when we have auctions. So I uh, didn't get them yet, but um, it'll be nice at some point when I can actually stand cards up on stuff instead of having to, lead, having to lean them. <laughs> I think the ghetto way. Anyways, I, got, I fell behind a little bit here. Um, Criterium Racer is in here. $2 Super Chat, Criterium Racer. Lee, thank you, man. Appreciate that. Very, very cool of you. And then traditional center back, Striker. Said, when is the next auction? Well, thank you for that as well. I think, I don't know, maybe tomorrow or sometime next week. I think I'm going to do, um, maybe finish off the rest of the 80s and 90s rookies. And then uh, after that, do modern. I might try to do one a week for the next the next few weeks until um, I liquidate a good bit of stuff. Just because I'm trying to make, trying to actually save up for a Chipper Jones um, 91 Desert Shield. Those cards, I mean, they vary. There's so many counterfeit Desert Shield cards out there that I almost don't trust buying one raw. Unless I, like, see the black light and whatnot. I'd rather see it in person, but uh, I can never come across that card in person. But the Desert Shield cards from 91, there's supposedly less than 4,000 of those cards, each one in the set. So the Chipper Jones is the biggest one to get. It's generally between, like... Like three fifty and five hundred bucks. I feel like it sells for raw. Frank Viola holding an apple. It's <laughs> I feel like Joe's card girl would hate that card. Doug Drabeck. Sandberg. Looking freaked out. Griffey franchise card. It's a cool one. So uh, I was just trying to build up some money, sell some cards to put towards buying the Chipper Jones Desert Shield. Um, so that and all the other cards are gonna cost me a fortune too. But I have like almost half the set now. Thank you, Corey, for posting links. Yeah, traditional center back striker says you have to get the Jones slab. That's kind of what I was thinking, too. Patreon Pirates in here says, Sweet Mantle, keep the great content, John. Patreon Pirate, thanks a lot, man. I was stoked on that mantle. And Dirk Remington says, Great hit. Thank you, guys. Definitely very, very excited uh, to pull that, even though it wasn't the auto. 
still uh, cool to see those. I'm not sure what the odds of pulling those mantle inserts are. The non-autos. is Will Clark again. It's a cool card of him with the lightning bolt bat. Thomas, second year card. Doc Gooden and a very pissed off Robin Yount. Boom Slank says, if the National happens, you make it your chance. I hope it does happen, and I hope that uh, I'm able to make it. I know Eric said that he was down to go, if it still does happen. Big Head, Drebeck, Bob Patterson, and Dave Henderson. Yeah, the week before Christmas. I feel like that's a very poor time to make it. Very poor time. I don't really see a lot of people going out to buy cards the week before Christmas, but yeah, I guess you never know. Those big head cards, I feel like I liked them as a kid, but as the years went by, I started to really despise them. Alex M says, I have a Series 194 per deck box, debating to open it to have a chance to mantle, a Griffey Mantle Auto. Yeah, you definitely should try. I know that um, there's different regions of 94 per deck. There's three. There's like the Central, Western, and Eastern region boxes. And I know like the Griffey Mantle Auto is only exclusive to like the certain region. I think there was like a Michael Jordan exclusive card. Like each region, they did something different. Um, so I forget which one it was. Let's find that Chipper Jones. Rookie Mike Lieberthal. Not too stoked about that, and especially not stoked about Scott Scudder and his angry face. The odds of the male triple, triple crown, that's something you'd have to look up on like baseball cardpedia because I haven't really, like the Almanac, I'm not entirely sure. I think they're, I think the book value on these are about 15 bucks, I think, for like a common mantle. So. Uh, big heads with toned down version of the upper deck fun pack cartoon cards. Maybe we should, um, <laughs> Corey. Yeah, Corey, if you're going to the national, come and scoop me up, man. I'll definitely go. Um, maybe we should open tops kids after this. Greg Briley. I keep thinking it's a Griffey every single time I see it last two times. It's really annoying me. Maybe we'll find another one. I don't know. Conseco, Corey Snyder. I, I'm, I'm almost tempted to like rip up another box of these. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis says it's only eBay PSA 8 for 600 bucks. Yeah, how sweet would that be to pull a mantle auto? That'd be insane. Yeah, the Naughty Tops, it's very difficult to pay the price for those cards or boxes. Sheffield, Billy Ripken, nice Griffey Dream Team card. This was a hot card back in the day. Bow Breaker. Part of the base set, but uh, that was a freaking sweet one. That's two years in a row, the score like kind of catered to Bo. Obviously, he was awesome. The uh, epic 90, 1990 score football baseball card, and then the bow breaker. That's still a freaking sweet card. I like that a lot. Barry Bonds. The print run on the mantle was 2,500. I'm not sure about those inserts, but the, he signed 2,500 cards. And move on, second year card. But uh, definitely sweet, though. Yeah, so we have like 12 packs left or something like that. I don't know. Should we open another box of these? Maybe I should save them. I don't know. Dave Parker. Some same correlation again. It's kind of a bummer because I doubt you're going to pull two mantles out of one box. I really doubt it. I don't think it's going to happen. Luckily, I have two more boxes. Dave Shaw has opened them. What else are we doing tonight? Yeah, that, that is true. There's Benny. Maybe I'll go a little faster. Craig Biggio. Chipper Jones, rookie card. Nice. Love it. Love it. Definitely a pretty nice looking one there, too. A little bit off center, but very miserable and sweaty. A <laughs> young lad at Chipper Jones there. That's a cool card, though. I really like that one. Back in 91, the, um, the hot one was Todd Van Poppel. And there was a couple other ones as well, but... The hot hand, Boom Slang says. Yeah, maybe I should. Upper Decks is open. Please on board. Yeah, maybe I should. Strawberry and Williams, Master Blasters. <laughs> that absolute miserable face. Chipper. I wonder what Chipper smelled in that picture. Yeah, it had to have been something raunchy because he looks freaking terrible. Chris Sabo. Doug Jones, the Fireball. That's a cool card. I like that. Sandberg, Big Head, Tim Costo, Gooden, Randy Johnson, No Hit Club. I don't know how many of those they made. Chet Lemon, Tom, Never Say Never. Yeah, like I said, you can get a box these between like 20 and 30 bucks at the absolute most shipped. But if I see them for less than, you know, 10 bucks or less, I'll buy them every time. Alan Trammell, just for a shot 
at that mantle auto because like I was saying before I got off topic uh Naughty Tops just keeps going up and I did find a box of Tops Big Series 3 from 1990 on eBay somebody just listed one because I follow the search on there guess how much they want for that box of Naughty Tops Big anyone take a guess without looking it up take a guess 300 bucks Dave Stewart they want you're, you're kind of getting you're kind of getting there Clemens Griffey Sr. Glenn Davis man of the year card this was a hot one back then too during Operation, Operation Desert Storm the flag card we pray for the safe return of all Americans involved in Operation Desert Storm and for peace throughout the world this is one of the last cards in the set if not the last card in the set that was a cool one Kevin Moss second year a lot of you guys are close. Seventy bucks. Corey was really close. Ike was very Ike and, and classic. And David, you guys are all very close. It's like fifty three dollars plus fifty three and some change plus like fifteen and some change. So it's basically like seventy bucks for tops big. <laughs> Paul else's I wouldn't pay five bucks for that crap. Yeah, tops big boxes generally they should be five bucks. I've seen them for as low as three bucks, and I've passed on them. And I like I kind of like Toss Big just for the nostalgia. There are a couple rookies in there, but I just really wanted to get a box of those for like twenty bucks and open them, looking for the Larry Walker and Sosa rookies because I don't have them. I'd much rather pull rookies out of packs and buy them. I mean, it's more fun that way, but not at the expense of seventy bucks. That's insane. <laughs> That's not awful. There's virtually no way to get a return on your investment. That's what I was saying. Unless you like rip that box and like have guaranteed like PSA 10s because like Griffey's in there in Series 3. It's a 110-card series. Griffey's in there, Ripken, Larry Walker, and Sosa. So you pull all four of those guys and you get 10s, which, I mean, you have a very difficult chance of even pulling all those four cards to begin with, let alone 10s. Then you'll probably get your money back, but barely scrape by the skin of your teeth. <laughs> Ike says, would not pay 70 bucks for, <laughs> for 70 of those boxes. That's what I'm saying. Barry Larkin looking real pissed off. And there's the Griffies. That's a cool card. Senior and junior. Matt Williams, Robbie Beckett, Frank Viola. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't know. I mean, the, the boxes are rare. Series 3 is rare, but not $70 rare. I'd pay $30 for it at the absolute most just for the chance to find this. Like, And what's even better is that we went to Rogers, Ohio yesterday. I'll do a weekend recap video tomorrow, but... I was there for probably 10 minutes and found the Sosa Tops Big from 1990. I couldn't believe it because I never see it anywhere. Really, really random. Another Trooper Jones. Sweet. Back-to-back -back Jones rookies. That is freaking awesome. Love it. Definitely love it. I think the first one we pulled is a little better shape. This one's kind of a little blemish up there, but sweet. Let's take another shot at that uh, miserable, miserable... <laughs> face yeah but uh some guy had like a few 5,000 count boxes and it was all like divided up in junk wax columns and there was like a small little stack of probably like 30 tops big cards from series three if that and so so rookie was in there and i was like what do you want for these he's like i don't know i'm like i'll, I'll give you a buck for a so so rookie and he's like yeah hell yeah i was like all right sweet man I mean, you can buy the Sosa on eBay. It's like, I don't know, like three or four bucks. But I was stoked, though, to come across it. So now I just need the Larry Walker, and I don't even need to buy a box of those. I mean, I could buy the Walker on eBay for like three or four bucks, but I wanted to pull both of them out of a box. Gwyn Larkin, Eckersley, Hall of Fame trio right there. Scott Erickson was a big name back in 91. Carmel Martinez is one I never liked. Schilling should be getting in the Hall of Fame if he keeps his mouth shut. Clemens, Davis, and Andy Hawkins. That was a good pack. Strawberry. McDonald and Greg Jeffries back to back. And we have, what, seven packs left of fun here. Thanks again for being here, you guys. Yeah, so tomorrow we'll check out weekend recap. I didn't buy a whole lot of stuff, but I did find some other rookies that I was after. Oh, I was stoked too because check this out. Another pickup from yesterday. I, I can't even wait to open these or show you guys. A bunch of dirty packs from 1997 that looked like they had stepped on and run over and everything else. But the significance here, Fleer 97, and these are, where is it at? Series 2. That means David Ortiz, 
could be in these packs. And I've been after that card for a long time. So I ripped the retail box of those like a year ago looking for it and could not find it in 18 packs. So maybe I'll find it in four packs, but I think I paid 15 bucks for four packs of those. I thought it was worth it because a box of 97 Fleer Series 2 is a lot of money. Doug Jones, the flamethrower. Ben B says, I'm heading to Triple Play Vintage tomorrow to dig through the dime boxes. Well, good luck to you, Ben. I didn't really find too much in the dime boxes. I found a couple singles. Um, like I said, I picked up that Doc Gooden 84 update for 25 bucks. I was stoked about that. And I almost bought... There's a couple there I almost bought that I walked away from. <clears throat> Orlando Cepeda, his rookie card. I almost picked that up. Um, and there's a couple other ones too. Boggs and Eric bought a bunch of stuff. Frank Thomas, second year. That's a cool one. Ozzy Smith. We've definitely gotten some decent cards out of here, though. I think Series 2 might be the better of the series. Mike Mussina rookies in Series 1, but um, Griffey Base is probably in there, too. But we've seen some nice ones regardless. Keith Comstock. <laughs> I don't know what that... Oh, everything's like something making like a squeaking noise in here. I was wondering what it was. It's my fat arm shaking the table. Matt Williams, big head. Roy Beckett. Yeah, I gotta move this back a little bit. Jeff Martin says, Can you open at least one pack of the 97 Fleer? Come back tomorrow, Jeff, and we'll open those all four packs up. I wanna save those for tomorrow. Believe me, I don't wanna save them, but we're gonna save those for tomorrow. Hopefully, that makes, <laughs> that'll make you come back tomorrow night and watch, hang out with us. Thomas Gooden and Yount. That Andy Hawkins card is pissing me off. Dan Billardello. <sighs> Really closing his eyes there. We never really cared for him either. There's Corey Ruby Ripkins that says, this is for you to open those 97 packs tonight and for some DD tomorrow. DD tomorrow? What is that? Dungeons and Dragons? I'm going to play Dungeons and Dragons on here. <laughs> I don't know what that's supposed to stand for. Let me get caught up in the chat here real quick. You're going to freaking tempt me to open those tonight? Well... That just totally sucks the fun on the weekend recap. I probably won't even do a video tomorrow then. I guess I still can. Um, did I miss anything back in the, in the stream? Oh, Corey, you kill me, man. All right, I think I got caught up with everybody for the most part. I did miss a bunch of comments, but I appreciate. Um, once again, appreciate you guys all being Dunkin' Donuts full. You're going to feed my Dunkin' Donuts obsession, dude. So I had Dunkin' Donuts today, and then I had Taco Bell. That's what you do when you don't feel like going to the grocery store. Even though the grocery store is right next to Taco Bell. I think, yeah, I'll just go there instead. And then afterwards, I'll, I'll, I'll eat and then I'll be full. And then I'll go to the grocery store. And then I won't spend as much. Because I, I have a problem with going to the grocery store whenever I'm hungry. <laughs> and then you don't want to do that. It's not a good idea. Roger Clemens, can they just buy everything? So you want to go when you're full. That's a life hack. <laughs> Dave Shaw... Dunkin' Donuts and Taco Bell. I hope you have a lot of TP. Alex McKeel, a rookie card question for you. I'm sorry, Alex. I didn't see that. Let me see. TX breaks us to do it. What's happening? It coming to egg. What's going on? We're down to our last two packs. But anybody that uh, wasn't in here earlier, we pulled the freaking mantle. And you all missed it. But um, I don't know what I did with it. It got lost in uh, the abyss of my junky toy room. Oh, there it is. We pulled two chipper rookies, and we did pull, not the auto, but the uh, triple crown insert card. That's pretty awesome. So we're down two packs, and um, now uh, people are trying to bribe me to open 97 Fleer packs. <laughs> Tony Papa says open. All right. I, I guess I'll open them tonight, but then I'll be bummed out tomorrow when there's five people in a live stream because there's nothing to open. Actually, tomorrow I'll probably just do a standard video instead of a live, uh, of a live stream. I don't have that much to show you for weekend recap, so maybe I just won't even make one. If Dirk says I'm getting more beer, what would you rather have? More 91 score or 97 Fleer? Only four packs of this, or, not, or 36 packs of this. Show more error cards, Goody says. I need to gather them all up. I don't have them all together. I definitely have a lot more. Do G.I. Joe? <laughs> Do the G.I. Joe video live? People would probably be so bored if I did that. Last pack, Magic, Ruben Sierra, Griffey's again. That's a funny card. I like that one. 
Sandberg, Big Head, and Mike Brumley. It's Saturday night. We have nothing else to do. Corey says, I guess I have to post this. I don't know what that is. Chef Martin, thanks, man. All right. I guess uh, <laughs> Ike Rodriguez. All right. So I guess you guys want to see these. All right. Wish me luck here because I've been wanting this David Ortiz rookie card for a long time. It'd be sick to find a David Ortiz Tiffany. But you can only find him in Series 2. And like I said, these boxes are very expensive now. Hopefully these packs aren't searched. Okay. I was questionable there for a second. Thank you, guys. Thank you for the best wishes. Nick says you're going to hit one. I hope so, man. So let's find the big poppy tonight. John Hudak. That is never a good sign when he's on top of the pack. Let's find this card that I've wanted for quite a few years now. This is a Jeter Headliners card. I found a few of those in the last box. And Bagwell Encore. Chody's is 87 tops in the pack. Look at that! Oh, man, the very first pack, David Ortiz rookie card. I cannot believe it. Wow. I've been wanting this for so long. That is freaking amazing. The first freaking pack. David Arias Ortiz rookie card. Man, that is awesome. Thank you guys so much for convincing me to open these. I've had this on my radar for quite a while. Generally, this card's about 40 bucks raw, between like 40 and 50 I'd say. And the Tiffany card is a lot more, but uh, man, have I wanted this for a while. Between this and his 97 Ultra, the only two rookies that David Ortiz had in 97, but man, <laughs> Dirk, John hits the screen meter. I'm sorry, you guys. Thank you, Corey, and everybody else for convincing me to freaking open these packs. The very first one. That is so awesome. I cannot believe it. Epic. I wish I had a card stand to put this on in the background. Man, of course, I don't have any one touches or anything near me. Not prepared ever. Wow, I cannot believe it. The first freaking pack. That is so, so sick. Let's party, Jeff Martin says. Let's party and let's, let's open some more 91 score. Sleeve that baby up, Boom Slang says. The Emerald... Redemption card, 6 to 10. You just collect all 10, I guess, to send in for anything. And you had these, I think, in every single pack. Todd Hundley. Kigo Sports Cards. And Vincent says, let's get two. I hope so, man. I'm so excited. We pulled the freaking the big poppy. And we got three packs left. And like I said, these ones like look like they were like dragged through the dirt. And <clears throat> we're like, I don't know. And like the... Uh, I don't even. I have no idea, but they they just don't look like they would be in good shape. And that uh, Dave Ortiz is splendid. It's phenomenal. Ken Griffey Jr. checklist. Oh, I that was another one there for a second. That would have been insane. Paul Molitor, the Diamondbacks card. Rico Rincon. What is this? Mike Piazza insert card. That is pretty awesome. First the mantle, and now the poppy, Vincent says. Yeah, maybe I should keep this going. That's an awesome Mike Piazza, though. Soaring star. I feel like these cards were kind of hard to pull as well. 12-card insert set. These are definitely nice. I think these are like the hardest ones to pull out of 97 Fleur, because we opened a few boxes of these before. Richie Sexton, Million Dollar Moments. That Piazza is pretty freaking awesome. Let me get caught up here. Traditional center back striker says, Enjoy it. Get that one touched up and into the PC. Thanks so much, man. Uh, I, I'm so happy to open these up. I cannot believe it. Nothing better than pulling a rookie card on a pack that you've been after for a long time. So much uh, worth more than paying for that card outright and getting it shipped to your door to pull from a pack is amazing. Dream Big Productions says, Overspent on gas 10 days ago because we don't like to be near gas customers who don't wear masks. Low prices, even busier. Costco Fuel Center is always jammed because of low prices. Total bill... $45.41. Dream Big Productions. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that. That is uh, definitely unfortunate. I'm not even sure how much gas is here. I know that a lot of people um, kind of lucked out. It was like around a dollar a gallon or less than a dollar. I don't think ours went below 220 in Pennsylvania. So, yeah, it's typically, I think, to fill my tank up, it's like around 35 bucks. I think, if I'm, if I'm on E. So, I know you're out west, uh, Dream Big. Thank you very much for being here, man. It's good to see you again. I haven't seen you in a while. 
Bartolo Colon, not his rookie card. His rookie we actually pulled. Did we pull that the other day? I know I bought it recently, but 95 Bowman is his rookie. Look at that, Griffey. Junior tabbed player of the week. Baba Trammell. Jason Kendall. Uh, another redemption card. 3 of 10. Cliff Floyd, Dante Powell, and rest in peace, Ken Caminiti. And a last pack. Man, I am stoked about that. Where are my one touches? I don't know. I, I thought I had some near me, but they're probably buried by pack wrappers. <laughs> Scotty Arms, what's happening, man? Lewis says, I love that, Griffey. I will send it to you, man, with your next package. Matt Williams in the Indians uniform. Uh, can't get used to seeing that. A-Rod, Encore, Big Mac Encore. Jay Hadley, I think you have that one already. Juan Gonzalez, good pack so far. We find another Big Poppy. Another Ken Griffey Jr. headliners, though. That is a cool card, and that's an insert set. 20-card set. Kurt Schilling, this is an epic, epic pack. Rick Helling kind of ruined that. Move on, checklist. Larkin. Juan gone, Larkin again, and Caminiti again, Million Dollar Moments. What a great freaking pack that was. Wow. That was, I don't know. I'm, Rick Helling kind of uh, bringing a bad vibe to that pack, but uh, overall, that was freaking sick, man. David Arias Ortiz, rookie card. I am so excited to finally have that in my collection. I was literally just going to buy this card and just say, um, the hell with it. I'm just going to pay the 40 bucks and buy it, but I'm so happy that I did not do that and waited for it to come out of that pack. What are the odds of that? Four packs and to pull that card. Freaking amazing. Um, well, I guess, I don't know. Do you want to see 91 score, another box 91 score tonight, or do you want to call it a night? It's up to you guys. Should we keep it going? It seems like we have the hot hand here. We have 131 people in here. Like I said, I appreciate all of you for hanging out. And experiencing that with me, why don't we try our luck and keep the hot hand going? Because I got more, so why don't we just try our luck? We'll go through these relatively quickly. We'll rip them out, see if we can find this mantle. I'm trying to be careful so I don't damage any corners in case there is a mantle waiting. We did pull one on the last box in case. Uh, I know you guys are just joining us now. It's been a pretty epic break. Open cards till Brittany shows up with pizza. That is ideal. I love that idea. Brittany, let's make that happen. <laughs> let's make that happen. I definitely want pizza. It sucks because, like, I don't know. Everything's closing early now. I can't stand it. So, like, Taco Bell, they close at 7 o'clock now. I was like, wow, that is that is awful. Scotty says you pulled a mantle auto from score. No, it wasn't the mantle auto. I guess I kind of implied that. Maybe intentionally, but the mantle triple crown uh, insert. Which these are still kind of hard to pull. We pulled that out of the last box. We pulled two Chipper Jones rookies, and then we pulled a David Ortiz rookie, which is freaking awesome. Justin Roberts says, I got a big old mantle for you right here. <laughs> Justin Roberts is with us. My good buddy. I'm glad you're here. Not clickbait. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to change the title of this video to We Pulled the Mantle from 91 Score. And then I'll just like show a picture. I'll put the thumbnail, Mantle Autograph. That would be ultimate clickbait. There's that American flag card again. Jeff Martin says the show must go on. Thanks for sticking around, you guys. Let's trudge through 91 Score again. Nice little intermission there from uh, the, or with the 91 or 97 Fleer. Nick Baker says, this reminds me of Upper Deck Chase to Reggie, or Chase to Reggie to open, yeah. 90 Upper Deck, possible Reggie auto. 92 Upper Deck, possible Ted Williams auto. Randy Myers, possibly very pissed off. Tim Wallach, all rude. Frank Thomas again, like that card. Donovan Osborne, forgot about him and that creepy Bob Welch. Thomas flexes, what's the most expensive box of cards you've bought? Um, probably maybe 400 bucks, somewhere in that range. Nowhere near Eric, because uh, Eric's bought in like $2,000, $3,000 boxes, but some of those older 70s and 80s boxes, I just can't justify buying them. 
like it's like a box of 75 tops if you, if you can find one they're like twenty five thousand dollars it's crazy just because of the potential brett and yout high psa grades which i mean geez chance of pulling something like that pretty difficult am i looking at the chat Corey? no i'm missing everything i'm too busy talking i'm sorry brent's cards and coins says hi john what did i miss hey thanks for being here brent um, if you're just joining, we pulled two chipper rookies out of the first box of score, and we also pulled the mantle, not the auto, unfortunately, but we pulled the mantle uh, insert card, and we took an intermission, thanks to everyone in here, and we pulled the David Ortiz rookie card on 97 Fleer, one that I've been after for a very long time. Very, very stoked about that. Appreciate you joining us. Donovan Osborne is on the watch list. Clemens... Rick Cerrone. Boom Slanks is 90 upper deck. Reggie Jackson was the first time an autographed car was inserted in packs. Yeah, that sounds about right. Scott Scudder count three. <laughs> that is cringe, man. Hey, Peyton Manning fan, what's happening? So we will open the final box of this, and then hopefully I'll be able to get pizza from somewhere by then, but I, I'm kind of thinking that it would be too late. Unless Brittany like, orders it right now, but I don't even know if she's still in here. Andy Hawkins, I'm getting really tired of seeing that card. Maybe we'll find Mantle Auto tonight. How epic would that be? If I pulled it, I would not be selling it, though. I would definitely keep that in my collection. I don't really keep many autos. Greg Bradley is still annoying me. I keep thinking that's Griffey because I think he has a horizontal card in the base set, but I think it's in Series 1. Nick Baker, thanks, man. Alan Trammell just gave away his autograph tonight on Patreon to uh, Matt. Was it Matt Farino that won that? No, no, it was... Uh, who won that? I can't remember now. I forget. Somebody won it. Matt Freeman won the Lee Smith PSA rookie. Danny Tarbell, Will Clark, Lightning Bolt. Dave Justice, Griffey's again. Is that Jeff Conine rookie card? We'd be flipping out about it if it was 1991 right now. Get try to get ripped right through these quickly. And then uh, try and beg somebody to make me a pizza after hours. Mickey says, while you're out getting the pizza, pizza, grab some lotto, rub off, and see if John get hit. Anything that's like card sweet. Fred McGriff, Sheffield, Will Clark. There's that horrendous Reds October card. Joe's card crowd would be so pissed if he was in here. Bond's big head. Bo Jackson, Master Blaster. <laughs> and <laughs> Jake P says, that Ortiz is making me nervous just sitting there. Yeah, I, I am kind of with you on that. Wait, did I find... Oh, sweet, I found a one-touch. It was... Uh, the one-touch was buried in that. So that's kind of... <laughs> that's kind of what we're looking at. Yep, got to, uh, I got to do some organizing here at some point. Let's put that in the one-touch. Did uh, did find one. Jeff Marsh is my favorite two channels or the past is live and fills pools. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate that, man. There we go. Now, so you guys can be anxiety free and myself also. Toy room getting dirty again, I see. Yeah, it's getting pretty bad, man. <laughs> it's getting pretty bad. Got to do some cleaning. <laughs> Corey says, Dear God. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to show you guys the floor again. Every time I make some progress, I end up buying more stuff and then it gets messy again. Doc Gooden. Frank Thomas, again, and Ozzy Smith. Juan Gonzalez, second-year card for him. Bobby Bo, Steve Carse, Canseco. And then the G.I. Joe video. <laughs> Ike says, those Master Blaster cards the most 90s thing ever. They really are. That and the uh, the Bow Breaker, Bat Breaker card. That's super 90s, too, the freaking lightning bolt. Yeah, you got to be really careful opening these. That Roberto Almar card like, creeps me out. John probably has Jimmy Hoffa buried in there. <laughs> Thomas Good and Yount. They are always together in the same packs. Have your parents ever seen the messy toy room? You know, my dad asks about it sometimes. My dad watches, like, I think he watches all of our videos, too, Eric and I both. So he'll definitely make comments, like, he'll ask Brittany, like, how messy, like, my toy room is and stuff. And he'll kind of just roll his eyes. I'm going to get to it one day. It's crazy because, like, growing up and everything else like 
I, I used to have like real bad OCD about keeping my like cards in order and like keeping my room clean, like spotless. I'd like vacuum it like every single day. And then, um, uh, I guess at one point I became a hoarder and just started taking on more than I can actually take care of. There's that bow breaker again, strawberry. Yeah. But, uh, one of these days I'm going to get it cleaned up in here. Maybe tomorrow will be the day. Saucies, I burned commons in a fire pit with wrestling and golf cards and red socks. <laughs> False. People who vacuum every day have issues. Well, I used to have a card shop in my room. It was Johnny's card shop. I, I don't know if my mom still has pictures of it or not, but I literally had like show, like a floor showcase in my room and everything else. So like, yeah, I would vacuum it every day. Like, cause neighborhood kids would come over there. Like they would buy cards at Eric's card shop, which was downstairs in the house. And then Johnny's card shop was upstairs. Yeah, it was a legit operation, man. It was a legit operation, so I was constantly in there, like, cleaning, dusting, vacuuming. It was my freaking business from the time I was, like, what, like, 7 or 8 until, like, 15 or 16. Johnny's Card Shop. I, I need to find some memorabilia from the from uh, my old store and, like, records. I would keep records of, like, every card that people bought and uh, had all kinds of stuff. Still have the showcase. Like, I, I thought about... I think it'd be pretty fun to do, like, a... A retro card video series, bringing that showcase over my house and setting it up, and like actually putting a, like a mock card shop in my house and uh, making it like a '90s card shop. So put like Todd Van Poppel rookies and everything else in there, and they actually make skits. Have Joe's card crew come over, have him be like creepy card shop owner or something. <laughs> like you could do a lot with that. It'd be pretty freaking awesome. Sturfel says, damn dude, we had such ch or similar childhood stories. That's awesome, man. David E says, a G.I. Joe video would take less time than cleaning the messy toy room. Yeah, you're right, man. I definitely need to get that video going because uh, in order to get my all my stuff cleaned up, I need to make that video first. That's like Chris Sabo. He looks like he's scared of life on that card. Jose Aline, I would have loved that one as a kid. Benito Santiago. Where is another Chipper Jones? Look at that. Our third Chipper Jones. Freaking sweet, man. Since we don't have card stands here, we don't believe in using card stands. We will just put those in the background. Really generic like that and ghetto. Chris Sabo is scared of the evil Rita, Rita Repulsa. <laughs> nice Power Rangers reference there, <laughs> Paul. <laughs> One of these days, we're going to go out to Ohio. And we need to rip something with him if he agrees to it. I don't know if he would ever agree to that. For all I know, he might know about this channel and might sit there and hate us. Or hate me, I should say. Keith Comstock, Juan Gonzalez again. Sutcliffe. <clears throat> Another Chipper Jones. Holy crap. These are rife with Chipper Jones. Four of them now in two boxes. That is awesome. And a mantle. And a freaking David Ortiz rookie card. Jake Pieces, you're making 91 score look better than it actually is. <laughs> That's impressive. <laughs> It really, it's not, it's, I'm not doing much, man. I am not doing much. I'm just a set of hands. That is it. But let's not, let's not drive the prices of these boxes up because um, I need to buy a whole bunch of these now. Tony Papas says, what I hate most is seeing elastics around cards makes me cringe. Thanks, Tony. Yeah, I definitely agree with you on that. I hate seeing that. I hate seeing rubber bands around cards. Definitely just ruins them. Paul else is terrible set, but these two boxes make it tolerable. Yeah, I mean, it's been pretty good. John Quack's Eric cards, you're making the series look great. Uh, that wasn't really my intention. My intention was to try to find this mantle. That's a cool Brett card. There's that uh, very, very deceitful Ron Karkovice. He is not less than 30 years old in this card. There is no way. Does that guy look under 30? No. All freaking lies. That is That, that, that card is a lie. We we're being deceived for whatever reason by Ron Karkovice. Great 91 score prices soar now. I was in the same boat, but then this year I I uh, organized my entire several million card collection by year, pulling out all the stars and getting them plastic and organized as well. It took months, but it was worth it. That's awesome, man. That's what I'm starting to do. I mean, I'm almost done with uh, my rookie collection. I only have two boxes, two 3,000 count boxes because... If you've noticed, like, 4,000-count boxes and 5,000-count boxes, like, you can't put cards in top loaders and have them in there. Um, they don't fit, and you don't want to warp your cards. So I found 3,000-count boxes work the best.
to have everything in top loaders and like you don't got to worry about them being warped. So I have like a, mod, a pre-2000 box, pre the year 2000 and dating back to like, I don't know, the 40s, I think. And then um, the new box, the modern box, post-2000 uh, current. <laughs> Carcavice is 30 in Yoda years. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, that's, I don't believe that at all. Why would they even try to lie about that? Saying he's like, what, like 27 or 28? There's no way. That's not even possible. Mike Fetters, those are Gwen, Ruben Sierra. There's that creepy Roberto Alomar, like, I don't know, cricket card or grasshopper or whatever he's trying to imitate there. Ozzy Smith. I was being an archer for a second. <sighs> Rifleman Griffey. First time seeing that one. That's a cool card. I like that. Jay's openings. What's happening? I don't know how much a box of Series 1 costs, but Series 1, the only Chase card is a Mike Mussina rookie, which you can usually buy, like, quarter boxes, stuff like that. But Series 2, like I said, a good price for a possible Mantle Auto. That just keep, It's going to keep surging in price. That's never going to lose value. George Brett, Mike Lieberthal again, another Griffey. Same exact coalition, Fernando Valenzuela, Kevin Moss. As I hold the cards halfway off the screen, Carcavice is like Fausto Carmona faking his age. <laughs> no, that's great. Twilight Zone Almar card. Yeah, that is a creepy looking card. Between that and the Bob Welch split finger card. Do the black border cards get dinged easily? I feel like they do. These ones don't seem to be too bad. Uh, like that Bo Jackson, you can actually see the ding up there in the light. That's a cool card regardless, though. I like that one. Barry Bonds, Strawberry Mattingly, first time seeing that. Bo Jackson, I wonder if we'll see another Chipper Smoltz card. Jeff Martin says, have you met Heather? Uh, I did once uh, during one of Eric's kids' birthday parties. It's football time, so he's calling it now. Six Chipper Jones in this box, and we found four already. I hope so, man. It's like kick the camera away um, out of pure excitement. We still have a decent amount of packs left. Jake Peace is crazy to think those chippers have been waiting 30 years to be pulled. I think about that all the time, too. These cards have been sealed for nearly 30 years. Finally getting out to breathe. And a very crappy pack here. Not even one semi story. Well, Dale, Dale Murphy saved that pack for the most part. As I have giant towers of 91 score about to collapse on me. <laughs> Paul L. No more. Well, we'll have, we'll have one more box of these. We'll save that for a different day. I won't put you through that. Bruce Ruffin, Barry Larkin, Landon Merced rookie card. That was a pretty hot one back then. We were pumped on him. Same with Anahar Sedano. I feel like he was a pretty big prospect. Will Clark, as I hold the cards off the camera again. Fred Lynn, he was a solid ball player. All right, look at that. David Ortiz in the back there. I'm so stoked about that. I need to try to get some packs of 97 Ultra and pull it, but those ones are pretty prone to bricking up. David Wells, Dave Stewart. No sign of any of uh, Bernard Gilkey. That's his second year card, I want to say. I think his rookie's in 1990, I believe. 90 Bowman. I'm pretty sure. Might be 91 Bowman. Could be his rookie. I don't remember. Fred Lynn should at least get a little more consideration for the Veterans Committee, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm surprised that he doesn't, honestly. Randy Myers, same with like Steve Garvey. Surprised that those dudes don't get more consideration. Felix uh, Jose with his eyes closed. Danny Almar, Todd Ritchie, Kurt Miller. Never liked him. Any events like Rifleman. I've seen some different cards at least now. Four chipper rookies. Pretty awesome. I wonder if any of those would be a high grade. I feel like they would pretty much all be a high grade, but I don't know if there's any 10s there. Mike Balecki, Ron Darling, who actually has an error card, since uh, people seem to like error cards a lot. He's got an error card that's no number on the back, 84 Don Russ. I actually bought that not too long ago. I think I have two of them now. Will Clark, Aaron Holbert, Clemens. You could probably get it on eBay for a few bucks, but... Pretty interesting Ron Darling rated rookie card, though. No number on the back. It's a cool one to go after and won't break the bank. Hope to do an error card series here sometime soon. 
there's a lot of them. Um, the, the Mark Witten error card, too. I don't know if I showed you guys that or not, Andre Dawson, but I do. It's sitting, actually sitting on my floor right now. Ken Griffey, franchise card, Matt Williams, big head. There's that creepy split finger card again. Paul Elson, you did a while back. I thought so. I didn't show in the last video where I grabbed that stack of errors off my floor. There was like hardly any even in there. We pulled the one Eichelberger, 82 Don Russ. Finkel was Eichelberger. Eichelberger is Finkel. Dave Justice, there's that Griffey's card again. Lewis Photography says, any mantle autos yet? No autos yet, but we did pull the insert. Bob Kipper, Matt Noakes, John Mitchell. David East says, what was the error on the San Diego chicken card? It was um, it was missing the trademark. Normally, I don't go after error cards like that, like statistical. Unless it's like something prominent, like the 90 score, Ryan Sandberg. Um, something like that. There's some errors in the 89 tops, too. You can usually get those boxes for pretty cheap, but there's like the uh, Stan Jefferson error, the Matt, or the, not the Matt Noakes, um, the Bob Welch error on there, but the Bob Welch error is just missing like uh, a line of text, Barry Bonds, but it's kind of a rare card, though. It's fun to go back and rip boxes of those because they don't cost much money and try to find errors, especially 89 Fleer, but those boxes are on the rise, though. I still need to find... Uh, couple of the ones out of there in the Marlboro card and um, the Jeff Treadway bullseye card. One that's not really known about too much. Reds October. So tired of seeing that. Paul says I found a ton of obscure errors and old football cards and misspelled words on the back. I've heard about old football card errors. Somebody else told me about those recently too. Murphy and Clemens as I almost damaged both of them. Down to the last seven packs here. And then hopefully I'll be able to get pizza, but I don't know. It's probably not looking too good since everything's freaking closed. Check the debt. What's happening? View 247 Flicks as the 87 Tops Don Manley All-Star card and an error and correction. I think it was uh, um, copyright just for memory. Yeah, it was the uh, the same exact thing with the Mattingly All-Star card from 87 Tops. It was missing the, the, uh, the TM. I think there were a couple other one All-Stars in that set too, missing the TM, but definitely the Mattingly. Paul says, Joe's next video will likely feature the Bernie on the Red Sox over card. I almost bought him a PSA 10 of that card for just for the hell of it. I, I think I found one on eBay for like 10 bucks, but I know he'd be so pissed off. One touch at Dennis Lamp. Let's find uh, that Curry Pocket shirtless card. Let's not ever see that again. Sandberg and Griffey. We find out our uh, chipper here. No, it's Tim Costo. He kind of looks like... Um, What's his name from Major League Two? Tom Berenger. I forget what his actual name is. Looked a little bit like him. Screw down the Red, Reds October card. I bet you there were some people in uh, back in 91 that probably had that card in a four screw down case. Roger McDowell, a wild pitcher. Henderson. Thomas. Aaron Holbert. Clemens. I've yeah, seen a lot of the same cards and no mantles in this box yet. We still have four packs left. But, man, what a freaking uh, epic. Some epic pulls. Welcome to Tim Costo. I love you. <laughs> I had this set as a kid. Yeah, me too. I, I still I have a... I have a, I'm going to say I still have a couple of these. One sealed and uh, one open. I think I still have the one from childhood, too. Henderson, MVP, Puckett, Clemens, Franchise. Strawberry, freaking Bernard Gilkey again. Who would have known that John Hudek... One of the worst omens we have here would give away to David Ortiz, rookie. It's pretty crazy. In the same freaking pack, too. Maybe uh, Hudek is a is a good omen. I never thought I'd say that. Rick Russell. Juan Samuel. Looks like another Tim Costo waiting for us in here. Sandberg. Chet Lemon. Shout out to Chet the Debt. Benito is a man, 91. He definitely was. Two left. Sean Hudek is my favorite omen for a reason. Corbin Bernstein in the Major League Two, not Tom Berenger. Yeah, Tom Berenger was in, uh, he was in Major League Two. Corbin Bernstein was in it too. Corbin Bernstein was Rube Baker. And then uh, Tom Berenger was uh, uh, the backup catcher. Was it Rube Baker? I can't remember. I need, I need to watch it again. 
I think no, Rube was like the starting catcher with like the um <clears throat> I think so. I just watched not that long ago. Roger Dorn, that's who it was. Roger Dorn was Corbin Bernstein. And Berenger was a backup catcher. Rube Baker was a starting catcher. <laughs> watched the Sandlot 3 yesterday. It was bad. I've never put myself through that. I've never watched the Sandlot 2 either. And what is it? Like the Sandlot series is supposed to be on Netflix. Um, it's is it supposed to be a prequel or is it supposed to be a sequel? I've heard diff I've heard both things that uh, it was a sequel with all the original cast, like set in like the eighties. I found the '89 Tops Welch no pitching line on the back in a plastic cube bought at Target a few years ago. That's pretty awesome. I have still yet to find that. Willie Mays Hayes. <laughs> Where did I get my mat from? Um, a guy by the name of Dear Someone. I haven't seen him in a long time. Uh, A.K.A. Chris Ava's glasses. He actually made that and sent it to me. Or he got it made online. I don't know. I couldn't tell you what website he got it made on. But, um, yeah, uh, definitely. Very cool. I'm going to do that. And look at that. Chipper Jones, the fifth one out of two boxes. That one looks pretty perfect, too. Jeez. Matt Williams, Strawberry. No mantle in the second box, but... Found one in the first one and five chippers tonight. That is pretty awesome. Gotta love the uh I love that card. Pretty awesome. Five chippers in the two boxes. And we still have one more left, but I'm gonna open that a different night. I'm not gonna keep you guys anymore. But this was the pool of the night, David Ortiz rookie card. So stoked about that. Put that in my rookie collection. That is all I have for you guys. I really appreciate you bearing with me through that break. And um, I think it was definitely worth it. 91 score. Like I said, 20, 30 bucks for a box of those. You want to take your luck, try your luck at the Mantle Auto. I feel like I'm going to get some more and continue this series until I can find some 90 tops for a reasonable price if that day ever comes again. Sexton Knife Works is auction off the chippers. Uh, yeah, we definitely can do that. Um, I'm going to do it a different night, though. I'm going to try to get some pizza. So, sorry, I'm a, being a hog, but <clears throat> we'll do it uh, maybe tomorrow night or Monday. Maybe we'll do another auction, and, yeah, we can definitely auction those off. So, thank you guys for being here. It was a lot of fun talking to you, and um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Hopefully, I'll see you tomorrow night. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys.